Hello everyone and welcome to the video, I'm Vice Troy and today we're playing some Dustland Delivery. So Dustland Delivery is a post-apocalyptic survival business simulator, well, at least that's what it says in the game description. Danger lurks around every corner, but no risk, no reward. So, come across this game yesterday, thought it looked quite good, decided to download it and played it for like 3 hours, so I'm going to start a new playthrough for this video because uh, obviously it wasn't recording it at the time. I do like the pixel art uh, style on this game, looks pretty cool, it's a sort of 2D game. Uh, quite challenging and his early access has only been out since the 12th of July I believe so it's still fairly new. If you want it it's available on Steam and at the moment it's pretty cheap. I mean I think I paid about £5.30 for it or about $6 I think American. Okay without further ado let's get going. start game I've already played the tutorial so we're gonna go with Haggard Plains the dustlands are a weird and wild place safe travels on the long road ahead confirm don't move a muscle loading map so character wise I'm just gonna go with standard character runner seems like a good place to start and I didn't realize the first time I played through you can actually change your truck <laughs> you learn some news but I'm gonna stick with a standard truck because you can get four crew members fuel use is pretty good power seems decent can carry a lot of cargo comfort seems okay and hull I think I mean it's not great compared to the the bigger truck but that also uses twice as much fuel so we'll stick with that um so our name I'm guessing is Runner and we're an X racer which means our driving speed is plus 10% so not too bad at all. This is the starting equipment we get. So 500 scrap, 20 rations, 400 fuel, 100 clout, 100 creds. I haven't quite worked out what creds are for yet though. We get a musket, metal club, beanie, electrician, hard hat and hunting dog. Nice. And so it begins, until today you were just another ordinary dustlander, a small time merchant in Valleyville. It was a simple life but a comfortable one, and you never saw the dustlands with the cynicism others seemed to. Looking out into a vast world you hardly set foot in, you saw opportunity and adventure, an unknown waiting to be known. One day you decided you weren't going to waste any more time, sold all your worldly possessions to buy a truck. You've just picked up your truck from a dealership outside the city. Now it's time to return to Valleyville to get the rest of your belongings. Let's hit the road. Task started, main story, visit Valleyville. And before we start, I'm just gonna see if I can turn down the game volume. Cause that is really loud, <laughs> really loud. So I know to play some of the game, but there's some things I still don't know how to do. So bear with. Uh, main story, visit Valleyville. Head to Valleyville to pick up the rest of your belongings. Task guide, head to Valleyville. Okay, so we right click there to set a, um, set a route and depart. There we go, we're on the road. So our speed's 44 kilometers an hour, it's not bad. Not long after setting out, you remember a story an old timer once told you about some hapless trucker who got so tired while driving through the dustlands that he fell asleep in the middle of a plague zone. The infected didn't let him sleep for very long. You think it might be wise to hire some help once you get to the city. Hint, you can hire new crew members at the bar. Makes sense. Yeah, we're in Valleyville. You have arrived in Valleyville, a large city in the central dustlands, a lawful place with abundant resources and well-built amenities. After a good first impression, Runner has begun to like Valleyville. First visit to Valleyville, Runner gained 580 experience points. After arriving in Valleyville, you withdraw the remainder of your scrap. It should be enough to get you started. You also discover that you're in, you've inherited two land deeds, one in Tyrannis and one in Starlight City. You've been gathering They've been gathering dust for so long that you're not even sure which ancestor left them to you. You figure that these deeds are your birthright, so you might as well try to claim them. Let's go! Main story, the Tyrannus deed. Main story, the Starlight deed. Quiet scrap, 3000. Cause 1. Now, as far as I remember, or as far as I'm aware, cores are used for upgrading your truck. I might be wrong. Because 
yeah, still don't know a great deal about this game. Um, so scrap, we have 4,000, fill 1,884, sounds like a lot. It's enough for 10,000 kilometers or 10,340 kilometers. Water, we have 50 plus 50. So I don't know if that means we have 50 fresh water and 50 wastewater. So you got wastewater there. Um, yeah, so just 50 wastewater. I don't understand where the 50 plus 50 comes from. We have 100 ammo, 60 food, or 60 days worth of food. I'm assuming that's what the D means. 10 tires, because we do have to replace tires, because they do uh, weigh down. Clout 200, so you can use that for getting like, services and things without paying scrap and things for. So clout is a kind of a currency. And credits have not entirely worked out yet, so not sure on that one. So crew, we have... So this is your combined crew uh, abilities or skills all added together. Faction, you can join a faction when your clout with uh, said faction is high enough. Automation, so auto eat, auto drink, auto driver swap, and auto swap tires. So all, all these things happen automatically um, as and when needed. So if your character gets uh, hungry, they eat. If they get thirsty, they drink. If, um, when you're, if you've got like two or three people in your truck and then your, your current driver gets too tired, it will automatically swap to one of the other drivers to carry on. And auto swap tires, so tires um, do have durability and when they get to 0%, they'll automatically be swapped out, providing that you have one to replace them with. And stop for dust storms. So this is an optional one. You could have it on or you could just stop manually, but dust storms as well as other um, elements in the game, they affect how your truck performs. Like dust storms, they make your engine overheat quicker if you continue driving through them. So it might be an idea to stop. Um, so here we go, let's go to the bar and we're gonna hire somebody to work on the truck with us. So you can either hire somebody through this, so you can hire a worker, rancher or farmer, or you can search for the list here. We have a robot. Uh, there's a couple of different options. So these are delivery jobs we can take on by junk, uh, which you need for crafting, uh, delivery missions. So we could hire um, this person who is part of the Metropole faction. And the other one we got is you get frisky. Is as is, 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 uh, <laughs> you, you can you can get frisky with people in this game as a sort of form of stress relief. It works, I guess. Because your character does have sort of needs, I, I suppose. Um, so if you click on the character there, it tells you the hunger, fatigue, stress levels, and thirst. And if you click next to each one of these, it tells you what you can do to sort of alleviate them. And this is where you sort of uh, attribute skill points once you uh, unlock them as well. So if you didn't have auto, eat, drink, etc. on this section here, you could eat manually, choose what they eat, select it from the list. Drink, drink water, drink coffee. So coffee brings your fatigue level down. And alcohol, I think that reduces stress level. But of course, if you drink too much, you can't drive because drink driving, even though it's a wasteland and you wouldn't get caught by police doing it, still wouldn't recommend it because you wouldn't want to drive your truck off the road and crash. <laughs> but the game doesn't let you do it anyway. So you got your orientation, your charm level, um, any love interests I think are shown there. Your opinions on things once you uh, start exploring the world will start populating here. And these are your attributes. So x race is one of our attributes. Your driving speed is plus 10%, which means the truck will go 10% faster than it would with another driver. I believe that's only um, active while you're driving. So if one of your other characters were to take over, your truck speed would drop back down to normal. So let's have a look. Success rate forty percent to hire the robot. Um, hundred percent for this character. So we could try hiring them. Faction Metropole. Your relations with this character's faction are too low. Minus five. They don't want to associate with you. I mean, we're not going to bribe them to work for us if they don't want to. They don't want to. But okay, let's hire a worker then this way. Intellect plus one. There's strength in numbers. If you have two people taking turns driving, you won't have to stop and rest as often. So we spent 700 scrap, but we've gained a trucker. And the trucker we have is just called worker. 
And there they are, worker. Um, I'm guessing their name is Knives. Or was the name Runner? No, it's like, my name is Runner. I think I have an actual name. And this is just Worker? Knives. Croker. I have no idea what that. Unless Croker's the, my name, and then Knives is their name. <laughs> Maybe, I'm not actually sure. <laughs> if you do know when you play this game, let me know. Okay, so. Let's have a look. Tasks. So we're going to head to either Tyrannis or Starlight City next. So if we have a look on the map, we've got plenty of fuel. We don't go worry about that. So circled in blue are our targets. So there's Tyrannis and then just over the hills or mountains, even Starlight City. So what we're going to do is we're going to head here first because it's supply crash. Old route uh, maps say this was a syndicate supply station some years back. There ought to be some good stuff stashed around here. So we're going to stop there on the way. And then we're going to call in this uh, town here called Reedville. So services, they have a bar and a store. So that tells you what sort of services available in each town. Tradable items tells you what they're, uh, they're trading in, but then below that you've got needs. So flour, cloth, tea, button mushrooms, oyster mushrooms, uh, Matsutake and agaric. These, these are all things that they're in sort of like desperate need of, so I think they'll pay a premium for those. And then underneath produces water purifiers, energy bars, fruit and medicinal herbs. So uh, you could buy them cheaper because they more than likely have an abundance of them. And we require five virtue to um, stop there. So if we have a quick look to see what this place needs and what this place produces, we could maybe load up the truck before we leave. Um, so rations, building materials, salt, medkit, bread, scallop, shrimp, scrap, flour. Uh, none of which I think this place produces that this place needs. Flour cloth, tea, but mushrooms, garlic. Um, rations, building materials. Nope, so nothing this town we're currently in sells is any good here. So... Well, one last thing we could check is if we go to the um, bar, have a look at these delivery missions. So, Dust Wolves Delivery. Um, okay, so we forget that for now. So, if we do a delivery mission for Tyrannis, I think they're somewhat friendly with us. Work a soul repairman for the first time, work again 40. So, the first time you meet people as well in this game, you gain experience points. I haven't, I haven't exactly sussed out how the whole sort of. Um, NPC interaction system works yet and how certain things affect like how they get on or if they don't get on that sort of thing but um, Crew Town has purchased vehicles for its people deliver bicycle box times four to Crew Town provided by client so that means provided by client means that the cargo you're transporting is provided for you it just gets loaded onto your truck some missions which are more difficult you have to source the items yourself and then deliver it you get paid a lot more for it but a lot more involved so we'll do that one um to crew town what's this one want? due to their compatible traits cold fish impotent worker and troublemakers opinions of each other have increased by 22 and then it gets some experience points so central gas station is waiting a delivery of packages deliver delivery container times two to central gas station wait 800 so we can carry fifteen thousand. Uh, wait with this truck at the moment without getting a speed penalty. So we should be able to uh, do this one as well. So it's two truck missions we have. Time tasks down there, separate to your main tasks. So you can see which ones, uh, how long you got left on each. So we're going to Crew Town and Central Gas Stations. We have a look, look on the map. So Crew Town is on the way pretty much to where we need to go. So um, if we go, boop, boop. And skip the mountains into Crew Town, and the gas station is. Where is the gas station? Ah, it's over the other way. Okay, so it's the opposite direction. So we may have to go here, and then we'll go back across here and through the infection zones, or maybe go north of the infection zones to get around it. Um, they need tires, fruit, and rubber. Neither of which, nope, this place doesn't supply any of those either. Or oh, this place doesn't. Okay, so let's go on the road again. Is 
I do like this graphic style. That was like a train there. It does look quite cool. Snow. So snow will reduce your horsepower and reduce your engine's temperature, which can cause it to stall. The supply cache is as good as new after all. What kind of maniac would go digging in the dirt out in the dust lands? You manage to uncover a stash of dried food. So we've got 20 rations. See how we're stopping at these places. Uh, while we're stopped as well, I'll just show you check tires. You can see the condition your current tires are in. And being a big truck, there's a lot of them. You can cool the engine using water. And using this slider here. See, the engine is already really cold because we just uh, went through some snow. And you can repair your truck on the roadside as well. But I think doing it on the roadside does cost a bit more than doing it in a town. Because, uh, you know, you're out in the middle of nowhere. And you can also camp. Which I won't do at the moment because it takes a little time to set up. So yeah, you can camp, which means you can go to sleep or you can cook if you need to cook some food. Very important to get those kind of traits uh, kept on top of. Or you can just rest without setting up camp, which means I guess you just have a little nap in your truck. Forecast tells you what the upcoming weather conditions are. And you can also honk your horn. So set out, let's get back on the road. So crafting items wise, um, you need to learn a lot of the things you craft. First encounter with abandoned car. We'll have a look at that in a sec. So yeah, with these, you have to research all of these. And by doing so, you can craft them. There's a wrecked old car by the side of the road. The windows are broken and the tires are missing. Do you want to see if there's anything useful inside? Search it thoroughly, three hours. Search it hastily, one hour. Or move on. Um, since it's early in the game, I think we should probably try and find as many resources as we can. And considering we've got plenty of time for these time tasks yet, anyway. Um, and the infection uh, amount in this area is low, so it's like zero risk. It's, uh, search thoroughly. You managed to find a ton of stuff left by the car's previous owner. Two tires, 208 scrap, 12 books. Nice, Tw books are handy for when you do want to learn um, new things to craft or when you want to level up your characters. They do come in very handy. At the lower levels, you know, they only require one or two books to uh, choose a new perk or skill, but uh, towards the higher levels, it takes quite a few books. So we're going to tributes. So it tells you the number of books it would take to upgrade these attributes. Uh, so we got one trade point, uh, but it would take four books because we're already, I know, not high, but definitely higher than one. But then with cooking, because we're fairly low level at that, we only use two books. So we uh, continue our journey. Notification, you have arrived in Reedville. In the middle of this town lies a small pond, lush seemingly connected to an aquifer. The pond, lush with reeds, is probably the most interesting thing about the place. <laughs> it's a bit harsh, isn't it? <laughs> when you roll into town, an older gentleman waves you down. Are you folks also couriers? He jogs up to the window of your cab. I've got a shipment here for the next town over, but my trailer's full up. Could you do me a huge favor and deliver it for me? You're a, you trust a total stranger with this? Sure, what do you need us to do? Hey, we're all peers, aren't we? Why even be in this business if you can't trust your fellows? Exactly. So, side story, deliver fuel. Nothing too complicated, just deliver these tanks of fuel over to the town next door. I'd make two trips, but I really need to get moving. Thanks again. I'll be sure to reward you next time I see you. Confirm. Okay, not bad, not bad. Time tasks, um, let's have a look. So we're, oh yeah, going there, aren't we? Okay, so this place doesn't sell anything that this place needs. So as long as our thirst is pretty high, we can drink some water. Fatigue is, is somewhat high. Yeah, we should rest a little while, but your fatigue is quite low. So you drink some water. No, but we'll continue because you can take over driving if needs be. So if we leave city and set out. So 
So they do have these random conversations um, as you're driving along. And I know it's been mentioned on the Steam uh, forums that people want them messages to go by slower so you can actually read them, which would be good. Or even if it's like some kind of log where you could, um, if you miss the message, you could just go back to the log to read it. The guy who asked you to deliver this fuel didn't even leave his contact info. A sinister thought crosses your mind. We should keep our word or this fuel is better off in our hands. Now we'll keep our word. We're honorable truckers. Yeah, how could you even think of doing something like that? Tusk tusk. Crew virtue plus one. Yeah, see we gained over there. <laughs> so now because main driver is fatigued, it switched over to second driver. And now we have an attribute point we can use. So what do we want to increase? Um, intellect. Completed this. When you arrive at Crew Town to deliver the fuel, the man from earlier is already waiting for you at the gate. See, I knew I could trust you. Like I said, we're all peers. He chuckles heartily. I asked only. I actually only need half of the fuel. The rest of it is your reward. Before you can ask his name or how he got here before you, he's gone. Weird, but okay. There's a lot of reading in this game. If you like reading, you'll like the game. <laughs> Crew gained 150 experience points. Acquired fuel, 600. Not a bad amount of fuel, to be fair. Tyrannish relations, plus two. Worker, virtue, plus one. You completed the task. Well done. Reward, 1,005 scrap, three clouds. This was for the other mission we had. You arrived in Crew Town. This town takes its name from a pre-fall oil well, which continues to produce small amounts of crude oil to this day. First visit to Crew Town. So... Two people on board, gained experience points. So what do we want to improve? I think intellect would be a good one to improve. So we have one time task left, which is go to the central gas station. Oh, there's slave traders in town. We don't like them. No, we do not. So we reset that. Now we need to head over to there. And they need wood, tea, and meds. Did this place supply any of those? Nope. Did this place supply any of those? Nope. Did this place supply any of those? I mean, is it medkit? Yes. It just says meds. Is that different to medkits? Or just any medical uh, thing they're looking for? Wood, tea, and meds. Hmm. So do we want to go around the infection zone? We're probably not going to go to a quicksand. That doesn't seem like a good idea. Okay, so we're going to go that way and then to there. Okay. Are we looking for fatigue and all that? We're, we're okay. We're not too bad. The store here. Fuel-wise, we're okay. We're not going to buy any fuel. We got a decent amount of scrap. Okay, let's head out. So yeah, because this driver's uh, driving now, we'd no longer gain the 10% speed boost from our normal driver, so that's why we're only traveling at 40 kilometers an hour. The first encounter with pool of water. Runner gained experience. Worker gained experience. Um, try your luck. Yay, we acquired three fish. Nice. Are we able to craft anything at all? No, I don't think we've learned anything, have we? Nope. Oh, we have. We can do a couple of things. We can craft new bumpers. Um, no driving things, though. Oh, a couple of the terrain modifiers. So on different types of terrain, these parts will reduce the amount of uh, damage potentially done to your truck. Your crew is exhausted. And it's raining. Okay, we'll stop. So collect rainwater. I think this is always a good idea just to make sure that you've got enough uh, water. Even though it's wastewater, you need to boil it to make it usable. Oh, they've leveled up as well. So you have a high intellect anyway. Your crafting skills are good. Um, so what if we improve your cooking skills? We have 104 books in total, so we're okay on books at the moment. So if we set up camp then, because both our drivers are exhausted, 
And we will... Do they need to eat? Yes. Yeah. So if we'd go to kitchen, cook. I'm going to cook some pork. How's that? We'll cook all of it. You made advanced grilled meat times one, grilled meat times seven. That's not bad. And kitchen. Uh, if we go start fire, then you can boil water to make uh, clear water. And there's 12. And it does cost fuel to do that, so be careful. So collect some more rainwater, and then we're going to sleep. So you can see the fatigue bar has gone right down now. So we'll sleep again, and now we should be good to set back out. Engine temperature's looking good. Tire's looking good. Toxic fog. Ooh. The road ahead is covered by a sickly-looking fog. It seems to be slowly drifting towards you. Charge through. Requires 40 fuel, and it takes an hour. Speed through. Takes 100 fuel, and still takes an hour. Flee requires 20 fuel, but it takes 3 hours. Haul ass out of there. Requires 50 fuel. Time past 3 hours. So I think we're going to go around because I feel like that would do some damage runner was wounded being accidentally wounded has made runner more serious runner gained 378 experience points you turn the truck around and try to escape but the fog overtakes you ah uh -oh. so we're in the fog now and trucker was uh one of the truckers was wounded okay let's uh let's get through this ASAP So they just talked about the abandoned car that we came across and they thought it was interesting, so they bonded over that. You arrived in Valleysville, a large city in the central Dustlands. After a first bad impression, Runner doesn't like Valleysville. <laughs> oh, okay. But why? Maybe it's because they grew up here, they don't, they fed up of seeing it. So we only stopped here because our route sort of took us through the border. Which is fine, there might be a medic here somewhere. Ooh, a robot. Ah. Melee weapons. Oh man, I ain't eaten in days. Give me some food. What am I supposed to do with this? Eat it? I need money, you dingus. Cheeky get. I haven't eaten in days. Give him some food. And he doesn't like it. Pay shop and tires. Okay, but we're okay. We got 10 out of 10 tires. The truck's at 100% hull um, and comfort three. So I feel like that's okay. Um, yes, yeah, so let's continue on our journey. So the library, show you that before we go. Research blueprints. So here, uh, you can learn how to make the things you can't already make. I'm not going to spend too much on this yet because. I feel like the books might be com uh, coming more handy for upgrading our character's traits rather than making things, but I might be wrong. Dress. Charm plus two. <laughs> Foraging plus four, hunting plus five. So it's like there's a good advantage to researching some of these things, but maybe not too early in the game. Like seating pad, you can uh, decrease driver fatigue. 100% study success. It takes fibers and scrap paper. I mean, that might, might be worth doing. Let's, let's learn that one then. You can less fatigued on the road. That'd be a good thing. Rain harvester. Collecting rainwater provides a small amount of clean water. So every time we collect rainwater, uh, water like we did not so long ago, um, there's a chance that some of it will be clean water straight away. So it's handy. Radiator to help with engine cooling. Okay, a couple of good things there. Let's leave the city and continue on our journey. Trucker's wounded, so we can heal them using ointment or a med kit. Do they work? The treatment seems to be working. Runner's wounds are looking better. Awesome. Oh, death storm. So always worth uh, just waiting out a death storm. Your camp is approached by local busybodies. They tell you that this is a no parking zone if you want to sleep. Go to the city inn. Ah, it's because we're too close to the town. So we're just going to rest then. Till the dust storm passes. It has. Let's go. Oh, admire moon. 
So you can admire moon and sunrises in this game, and it will decrease, uh, decrease, decrease stress slightly, <laughs> which is a, an easy way of decreasing your crew members' fatigue, uh, not fatigue, stress levels. Let's head out. Work has started talking about Valleyville. Runner has heard of Valleyville, but has no feelings towards it. See, where they're automatically drinking water and eating there. If you didn't have the automation turned on, you'd have to do that yourself. So it just it depends how you want to play it, really. If you want, like, full control over all these things, then you could do that. Notification. First encounter with dry riverbed. You came, uh, you come up on a dried up river. The banks look a little steep and the riverbed looks parched and cracked. What will you do? Drive across or take a detour? Hmm. Drive a I think we should drive across. It should be okay. You managed to cross without incident. Ooh. Good, 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 good. And you can check the tires when you stop and only when you stop, which makes sense. But see, all our tires are still in pretty decent condition. Apart from this one, that seems to have worn more than the others. And this tells us how long to our next waypoint in the bottom then. You arrived in Old Riverbed Landfill. This place is filled with unwanted detritus. Confirm. We gained a skill point. Tree point. Let's spend that on... I think attack's a good one because when we start fighting the plagued... Um, that's going to come in handy. So what we can do here is search, because it's a rubble area, what we're going to do is search for supplies. And we're going to keep doing this until we get confronted. So you found two widgets, two scrap paper, six leather, foil, uh, foil two, and pig iron ten. So these supplies then is what we can use for crafting. So what do we need, for example, to make that? Oh, so we need 12 fibers to make the seating pad. We've got two out of five scrap paper, so we're going to search again. Oh, that is not a good noise. So we found 56 scrap, pre-fall material, gear, iron, connector, mystery liquid, gas, and pig iron. We were attacked due to a high risk, current chance of being attacked every hour, 14%. So 9 to 50, what we're going to do is, um, we're going to run this time. Only because I just realized I've forgotten to do something. So we need to equip <laughs> these with weapons. So they have attack, eight attack, and you have three attack. So yeah, we want to give you, so we'll give you the musket and we'll give you the melee weapon. And crafting plus 20, charm and fitness plus one. So we'll give you that. And um, what's your crafting level? I think it's better than mine, isn't it? 20, yeah. So if you have that. Cool. Pets? Oh, a hunted dog. Okay. A hunting bonus. So your hunting is level 2. Your husband is level 8. And your hunting is level 8. Husbandry level 5. So okay, if you have the dog, we'll spend a ration to train a pet. So we have a hunting dog now projectile not sure what they do so what we're going to do now we make her attacked again but that's fine because we have weapons now we're going to search again carefully so we found 43 scrap three full material iron connector okay and we're gonna fight them this time so that's where they start it's like a turn based of attack sequence we can't melee till they're in this square we can't throw in till they're in this square and then the accuracy improves every time we move up on these slots. So at the moment it's 18%, so it's not worth shooting because we'll probably miss. So we're gonna end turn until that number looks a bit more decent. So 48% chance. Landed one hit. 53. One hit. 58. And shoot. Melee. Shoot. Melee. Here we go, only one. So we gain 20 experience points and it's now tipping down. <laughs> wow, that ring is heavy. Okay, we're attacked again. We didn't find anything this time, though. So then turn into a little bit closer. There we go. 
So we may have found everything because the search didn't turn anything up. So what we're going to do now is leave. So we're going to continue our journey in the heavy, heavy rain. <laughs> There we go, it's a bit better, isn't it? Admire moon, so de uh, decrease stress levels a little bit. The moon's lovely tonight. You feel like you could look at it for eternity. So engine temperature's looking good, so we're going to continue. Um, your fatigue is quite high, so the swap drivers. We should have enough uh, driving time left before we reach the next waypoint without stopping. Notification. First encounter with abandoned train. Ah, okay. You find a rusted out train on the tracks. Most of its carriages have derailed. Want to search it for stuff? I mean, it feels like unless this is really high, you're going to want to search everything thoroughly to find more stuff. Ah. A horde of infected come pouring out of one of the carriages. You ask them to show you their tickets, but they rudely attack you instead. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay, I like that. That was fun. Okay, so let's wait till they're a bit closer. Victory. Okay. We're nearly at our destination, so let's just set out for the last bit. Watch sunrise. You stop to watch a gorgeous sunrise. All right, time to get back to murder and mayhem. Stress reduced. Yeah, so virtue plus one. You completed the task. Well done. Reward 952 scrap, three clout. You have arrived in Central Gas Station, a gas station located in the middle of the dustlands. Looking out over the dead center, the central plague zone. Many adventurers stop off here on their way to explore the dead center. Few ever make it back again. So we get some experience points and we get a trade point. As you enter the town, a shopkeeper sitting on his stoop tries to get your attention. You folks heading to the dead center? What's the dead center? You <laughs> gain 200 experience points. You got this close to the dead center and you don't even know what it is? You must be seriously lost, friend. It's the biggest, most infected plague zone in the Dustlands. Dangerous, sure, but that just means nobody's been there to pick it clean. Lots of treasure to be found. This town's the last friendly stop before you get there. So, nope, we're not going to the dead center. The shopkeeper looks a little disappointed, but keeps talking. I've run this shop for years. I've sent, uh, I've seen a lot of people going into the dead center, but not a lot of them coming out. I've heard that there's this coffee factory in one of the cities on the outskirts of the dead center, the biggest in the dustlands. There must be a mountain of beans just sitting there, waiting for someone to claim them. Give me your map, I'll mark it down for you. Thanks! So side quest for coffee factory, I mean, post-apocalyptic world. Coffee is probably a uh, very sought after asset. I think we should get some, but carefully. Okay, worker, what are we going to upgrade with you? Crafting would take 10 bucks. Um, cooking? I think cooking is a good one to go for. Crew is exhausted, like proper fatigued, so, oh, this place doesn't have an inn. So we have no time jobs, we've already delivered them both. Uh, engine's okay, but we've taken, we've taken some damage, so we've got the repair shop, repair truck. Repair hell, and we'll just repair all that hell. 78 scrap costs, that's not too bad. There we go. Okay. Yes, are we able to craft anything yet? Um, we have enough stuff to make the radiator and the rain harvester, but we haven't researched any of those yet, and there's no library in this place to do so. So we're not going to be able to do that. Hull. Can't do any of those. Combat? We got enough to do the auto uh, ammo lathe, but we've not learned it. Cannon rack, crew accuracy plus 10. 
Damn. Okay, so we have, we're not too bad on resources. My advice is whenever you get the chance to get resources in the game, definitely go for it. And on that bombshell, that has been a first look at Dustland Delivery. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do more on this series. Thank you for watching and see you next time, folks. Goodbye.